Hey, it's Todd with Defense and Safety. I'm going to do a knife review here. Now, this is a knife that knife maker that I have admired and wanted to own one of his knives for a very long time. And I was a little nervous because he makes a lot of different knives. Um, they're all somewhat similar in probably size and function and kind of philosophy. But, you know, sometimes you just want to feel it in your hands. And even when you see a lot of reviews online. So I was out of town at a conference, and I, I landed in LAX. So instead of heading north, back to where I live, I took a short drive south, and I stopped by Ernest Emerson's shop, and I picked up a CQC 15. And it was a cool visit to his shop. Um, it's kind of in this industrial area south of LA, um, and... You, you you know, you use your GPS to find it, and it's like a, a dead-end road. It just comes to a dead end, and there's just nothing but industrial shops there. So I found a street parking, just uh, like a one half a building up. And so I'm walking back down the sidewalk where his, uh, where his shop is, and so the first thing you kind of come to before you get to the building is the driveway that lets people pull in back. And it's not for, uh, I don't think they get a lot of customers there. This area is kind of in the middle of nowhere. But um, that's where the employees probably park and maybe deliveries. And there's a back door and there's a sign, you know, says something like, you know, you're not authorized to be on this on these premises and you'll be met with lethal, lethal force. So it's pretty cool. And then as you walk further down the sidewalk, there's like wrought iron on the front of the building and the whole front is open there and you can see through. And it's a full-on gym uh, training room. So he's got all kinds of stuff for close-quarter combat training and you know free weights and stuff. And that looks really cool. And then you just go all the way down, and there's the door with a Beware of Dog sign on it. But you come in, and there's a nice, welcoming lobby. It's uh, It's got like a place to sit and, you know, magazines on knives and guns and a little counter full of knives and a, a bunch of T-shirts. And... Um, a nice woman came out and asked me what I wanted. I told her I was interested in looking at the knives and I wanted to, to hold them before I, I chose which one I wanted. And she asked me which ones I wanted to look at. And so I looked at this one, I looked at the Roadhouse, and I looked at the full-size Commander. Um, those were kind of the ones I wanted to go with. And I, I really ended up choosing this one. I'll get back more to the story about my visit. Because it, it has kind of the best of the Commander and the... Uh, the original, or the one that made Ernest famous, is uh, CQC uh, 7, which is the Tonto. So this is the, I think they call it uh, Tont, Tontcom or something like that. But you can see it's got the recurve of the commander, with this nice recurve here and belly. And then it's got this Tonto-style tip, which is, you know, they use the 8th-inch steel and it's pretty nice right to the tip. Uh, it's got the wave opening, the titanium liner lock, which I've been playing with it a lot. And I'm, I'm looking at about 40%. And it definitely needed to be broken in. And uh, I still think with these black coated blades, they're a little, a little slower to deploy than maybe a satin finish because there's nothing on them. But so I go in there, I'm talking to this woman, and then I see Ernest in the hallway. And uh, he sees me and he kind of nods and he's having a conversation with one of the employees there. And then uh, he came walking over, introduced himself, told me about the, the blade show that was coming up that weekend. That was a Wednesday. And so the, uh, the blade show that just happened south um, in Orange County, I forget which what uh, the shop that does it, but P Plaza, um, Plaza Knives, they, he said, no, you should come down for that. And I, I didn't. It's just too far to drive. I just wasn't in the mood, so I told him I wasn't going to go. But we ended up chatting for a while, and I asked him, because they will tap. This is, you can see the clips on the right side here. I had mine taps for the left. They will tap them for you there. Um, and they, you know, take it apart, and they deburr it, and, you know, they do a real nice job because they go right through the metal liner and everything. And uh, they did that while I waited. But And I told him, I said, you know, I don't understand why you just don't make your knives that way. A lot of knife makers do. I mean, you look at the... The pair of two, and it's four-way carry. That's the knife I had. I didn't show them that, but that's the knife I had when I was down there. I'll just put this here for size comparisons. 
so you can see. I mean, if you, they're comparable. I mean, this is definitely a thicker, heavier blade. You know, these are very dainty in comparison, and uh, weight-wise, I mean, there's no comparison. But um, this isn't too heavy. Um, the other thing, and I don't know if this will show up, but the G10. I mean, can you see those lines right here? I can see them in the viewfinder. When you do this, they kind of have a 3D effect. And they actually kind of move. You can tell that they're under under the surface. It's really beautiful. The other thing, when I, if you smell these knives, when the G10 handles when they're brand new, I've never smelled G10 that smelled so fresh. I mean, it it's kind of stinks. Um, and his shop, actually, when I was leaving, you could just smell chemical, like G10 smell. So they must have been making some fresh G10 back there or something. But anyway, so... I said, you know, look, I think it's important because um, a lot of police officers and military want to carry something on their weak side so that if they're dealing with uh, weapons retention, they have something else to go to uh, on their uh, weak side. And he agreed, and he said, you know, he makes them sometimes for people, special order or departments or organizations, but that he's still not going to right now do it that way, even though his Karambit comes with, uh, with them on both sides. But I guess that's a different type of weapon. Um, and you really do need that. But anyway, super nice guy. It was really cool to talk to. Um, and so I picked this knife up, and I, I've just I've been carrying it ever since. And I, I will say the G10 is very aggressive. I mean, you hear that? Listen to this. This feels smooth in comparison. Here's the Cali 3, which maybe hasn't been carried as much, so it's not as smooth out. But this feels, I guess it, I mean, I can't even move my thumb across it. It grips it that hard. Super grippy G10 to the point of ripping your pockets, I think, if you keep doing it a lot. I've got some problems with my jeans anyway from just carrying this all the time. Or my uh, zero tolerance, zero 0350 is pretty rough too. So from that standpoint, you know, it's this thing feels like a tank. I mean, when you get this in your hand, and I love that this has, you know, this cutout on both sides, because it just lets your hand fill it up. I mean, if you put your knuckles in there, I mean, it's still not tight. And I have, I have medium to medium large hands, um, just a comparison of what it looks like for me to hold a pair. You can see a little bit on both sides, but um, this thing feels like business. I mean, you know, obviously Ernest is uh, very serious about close quarter combat and he makes pretty much a no frills, super freaking serious knife and that's exactly what this is. I mean, when you hold this in comparison to any knife I have, um, this feels in your hand. I mean, it lockup is perfect. I will say I did take set this with some Loctite because it, it did feel like it would back out and I think that's what they recommend. But this thing feels like a fixed blade in your hand. When you pull it out of your pocket and it waves open, you feel like you have a fixed blade in your hand. It is one badass knife. Uh, it's got the chisel grind. came super sharp. I mean, it'll cut. Um, I love it. Uh, you know, And I compared it to the mini CQC-15 because I, I, I thought about that. And it really, the size comparison was about comparing it to this para. I mean, that's how much difference it was. So I was like, you know, I'd rather take a little bit more knife. And then the last thing I want to say about this is, you know, you can grip this and it kind of comes out of your pocket that way where you have this three fingers and look how much more reach you get. You know, come across the knife like that, you get that much more reach rather than this. That's sometimes how I'll grab it. But I, I really have been loving this knife and uh, I'll probably do an in-depth review, but you can see it's got the thumb stud, it's the, it's the uh, this one was made in 2011. It's the 154 CM steel that he uses. And it's, I mean, it feels solid. It's a beautiful knife. All right, well, that's my quick review of the Emerson CQC-15. Thanks for watching.